then the area of the corporate entity is the GIS. I, I didn't. I thought, just show me the map and we'll argue over it. Because to me, it's a document to argue over it. Um, I don't see. I think it will still be through talking that the ownership will be established on things in the map. The map will be put up at talking point. Which annoys government and, and annoys them because they think, well, here's, here's your forest, here's your. Once it's in the database, government loves that. It's official. Just like the other day with the survey, they put the lines out and it's, mm -hmm. people just come on and picking up the lines. So they don't, they don't, to me, they're just another starting point for an argument, which is a good thing. I think it's a good thing. That doesn't matter. What do you mean by? What do you mean by layers that they keep secret? What does that mean? So in the, in the uh, state of the Pakiwa is the name of the NICE database. Uh, and they will just map sacred science, public science, various, whatever. And that's in a layer in there. And that, they don't have to communicate. They are in a position of, of great influence in the South Island. They settled first. They got 175 million. This way they've grown to 600 million. They have, which is an incredible performance. Um, they have right of first refusal on any government land that comes up for sale. So they've been buying in land and distributing it to the market. So it's property development, certainly in a lot of respects. And they've met a lot of their traditional sites, their Mahina type sites, their sacred sites, and all that come in. And now, when a question comes up from Environment, Canterbury, uh, Regional Council, City Council, Government, can we, you know, we want to put a road in there? They go to their database. Oh, so well, actually, no. They don't necessarily have to explain exactly why not. Yeah, no, that's no. Now they're still in negotiation. They don't have complete power over these things, but they don't have to explain exactly where or why something is secret, something's public, something's secret. But not all you are in that position. Um, my area is, and we're, we're settling at the moment. We've got 500, well, there's a huge settlement, 500 million worth of forestry assets. Now, people are starting to go like, I'm starting to go like, I've got a $40,000 student loan, I'd like to just disappear. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to change it here, but there's stuff they keep seeking. And if you're in a position of control, there's, there's your indicator of control. You have to tell the government why not, but they don't tell the government. It's a question down here. Well, I was just interested, you were talking about crops. Very, very briefly, what is the story of the kiwi fruit? From what I understand, it's originally from China. The Chinese gooseberry. When I was born, when I was a kid, it was the Chinese gooseberry. <laughs> and they bred, bred some varieties, sweetened them up, made them a little bit bigger, and branded it the kiwi fruit. And I've never really liked kiwi fruit. Now, now they've rebranded it into Zespri, which is a company for marketing kiwi fruit. But they don't call it kiwi fruit, they call it a Zespri. And, and they now have a hairless golden Zespri, which tastes nicer and costs more. And so it's a, it's a, it was a biotechnology marketing coup. It was a strain that's sold now with bread in New Zealand. Bread in New Zealand, but it's a Chinese crop. <laughs> They're very old. Oh, yeah, we do all sorts of swifties on this. So we'll market. People want to buy the kiwi fruit and buy the kiwi fruit. <laughs> it's like Mardi potatoes. That's from South America. I have a question. I, you, were, you were talking about the customary issues um, that you worked in and, and some of your work of observing how scientists are interacting or maybe not interacting <laughs> with, um, with the community. I'd like to hear a little more about that. I went to a, I had the um, UK Grace presentation. There was just this, what happened was that a, a group of, of Pākehā researchers with a couple of Māori collaborators at a time, they pitched the force, the Foundation for Research Science and Technology, you know, like the National Science Foundation, this project, we will, you know, assist Māori in customary fisheries. So customary fisheries, non-commercial, small-scale, local uh, management of fisheries, generally marine, but also freshwater. Um, and they pitched it to Māori and they had a hui. So we had three hui. The first one, you know, let's turn around a bit, and here's the researchers coming up with their milestones. These are the 80% of milestones that's been decided, but we've got the freedom and the power to decide 20% of the milestones. 